12th of January 2024. This is Christian Coles, Professor Solange Martinez, documenting the uh, racketeering within uh, the Waterbury City Housing Court, the selling uh, of the stealing and selling of uh, court papers, eviction court papers, um, belonging to somebody else uh, to be used uh, for um, uh, the eviction of uh, other victims, uh, of victims like elderly disabled citizens. So they steal, uh, the court clerks uh, steal and sell the landlord's um, eviction papers of somebody that uh, is being evicted, like in this case, uh, Angel Martinez, to evict uh, somebody else uh, by removing with white out the name of uh, the evicted person, Angel Martinez, and putting the name of the victim, uh, the elderly disabled Christian victim, Luisa Oyarson, in this case, on those papers and serving those, paper, those papers to the victim uh, to illegally evict her, evict her by court fraud or through court fraud because they know that this uh, elderly disabled Christian tenant is a model, model tenant, is an excellent tenant and there is no way they can evict her. Uh, so the court clerk, uh, chief court, court clerk in this case, uh, Mr. Richard, he refused to give his last name uh, which is very suspicious because the law says that he has to give his first and last name upon request. But um, Richard uh, has uh, blacked the elderly disabled Christian victim uh, of this scheme uh, from filing her petition, her court case against uh, the landlords for the last uh, five years or so. Uh, and she has tried to file uh, three court cases, uh, I believe a fourth court case, and he blacked her uh, by forgery, uh, which means that he took the papers that she filed, um, made a, a photocopy, and um, wrote what he wanted to write on those papers with her signature. Uh, so after he made a copy, uh, used white out to white out whatever he didn't want, uh, with her signature on the copy, he wrote whatever he wants and gave her the copy of what she did not write on her petition uh, and said that she, he couldn't file the, the, her cases. Uh, that's by forgery. In this case, he refused to file uh, the cases, uh, the case uh, against the landlord that she filed in September of 2023 uh, because um, he uh, claimed that uh, uh, things on the forms were missing, uh, etc. Uh, he qualifies for a nine years prison sentence because the law says uh, that upon receiving the petition uh, of um, any resident of the United States in the District of Columbia, the court clerk clerks must file the petition. And in this case, in the case of uh, Connecticut, the court clerk must file the petition. He must stamp and file the petition. And he has a choice. If he, if he has a problem with some paper uh, work um, that she submitted, he needs to uh, uh, stamp, and, stamp and file the petition, give it a docket number, and give her the copy of the docket number of her petition with the docket number. That's the law. In this case, what he did, he kept returning the uh, the cases uh, that uh, she sent certi certified mailed the lawsuit, the petition, uh, saying that uh, she was missing something here, something there. Uh, so he has stole, stalled uh, for, uh, he has been stalling the case, her case against the landlords, his landlord's friends for about five months now to give them time to illegally evict her through uh, court fraud to a sham, uh, a legal sh uh, a sh a sham, uh, which is court fraud. Uh, don't buy this chief uh, court clerk and his landlord's friends. Uh, and the law says in Connecticut, uh, section 60-7 and 60-8, 
eight that he must file her petition, uh, give it a docket number, and then tell her if uh, she, she, she needs to fix something, tell her so she can fix uh, what she needs to fix after he gives her the uh, docket number, which he refused to give her uh, through court fraud for the last five months or so, or so to give time to his friends to um, illegally evict her out of uh, 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 her government subsidized Section 8 apartment. So that's what's going on. And also, um, besides violating uh, this uh, Section uh, 60, hyphen seven and uh, 60 hyphen eight uh, law. Uh, he also committed forger uh, forgery uh, to try to prevent her from filing uh, the court cases against the landlords for the last five years. Uh, so that qualifies him for several um, prison sentences uh, for uh, these crimes uh, that he committed against this elderly disabled Christian with the aggravation with the aggravated uh, charge uh, that she's elderly and also disabled and also a Christian. Uh, that's illegal discrimination uh, in Christian persecution. So this is the situation. So we are um, documenting the situation and showing the public as legally advised by a group of attorneys specializing in racketeering um, what happens here in this uh, United States courts. Uh, nowadays. You have reached the Waterbury Superior Court housing session. Our fax number is 203-566-4080. Please. You have reached the Waterbury Superior Court housing session. Our fax number is 203-596-4080. Please be advised that calls show up under this caller ID number. Please know that the Connecticut Judicial Branch would never make a call soliciting payment. If you receive this call, please contact your local law enforcement office. This office only deals with landlord-tenant matters only. For the clerk's office, press 1. For a directory of administrative offices under... Thank you for calling the State of Connecticut Superior Court Clerk's Office. This call may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance purposes. Para escuchar este mensaje en español, marque el 2. Please select from the following options. For criminal or motor vehicle matters, press 1. For civil case matters, press 2. For family case matters, press 3. For housing matters, press for other the estimated wait time in queue is one minute. Superior Court Clerk's Office, my name is Karina. How may I help you? Good afternoon, Karina. This is Christian College Professor Solange Martinez, or good evening, rather, <laughs> because it's 4 o'clock. I um, salute you and I um, bless you. I was wondering if I could speak to the supervisors of the court clerks, including the supervisor of the chief court clerk, Mr. Richard. And do you have a, a case with the court? Do you have a docket number, please? Yes, I have a docket number, but the docket number is not, uh, was given to to somebody else. They wrote uh, the court clerk, Richard, uh, removed the filer's uh, name and put somebody else's name on the docket number, which is forgery and also court fraud. So that's why I need to speak to his supervisor to see what uh, he or she thinks about this situation because uh, he also prevented uh, the elderly disabled uh, filer of the case uh, for five months against his landlord's uh, friends uh, from filing her petition against them. And that is a violation of section uh, 60-7 and 60-8 of the Connecticut Connecticut statutes. Uh, so um, this uh, court clerk has violated several laws, so, and I need to speak to his supervisor. So, so and I'm sorry, Miss. So, um, 
could you please give me the docket number so I can, be, before I transfer the code, so I can understand what you're referring to, if you don't mind. Please. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can get the docket number. Hold on. I have it here. A, a tort a case, a tort and civil case, as well as an eviction case, because Richard, the chief court clerk, has been preventing the uh, elderly disabled Christian victim tenant from filing the, her tort case, uh, housing court case against his landlord's friends for five months. And now his landlord's friends went ahead and okay. filed me, an eviction on her. I can, let me see if I can take a look at the case so I can understand. Do you have the docket number, please? Or yes. If you don't have it, could, could, you can give me the last name. That's fine. Uh, the docket number is U as in under WYCV 22606719 s as in sam okay rosado sonia versus exchange so and who am i speaking with please uh this is luisa oyarson's caretaker the problem is that her name is not sonia rosado her name is luisa oyarson and uh the chief court clerk richard substituted her name for sonia rosado's name and also substituted the number 23 for 22. So he filed the case fraudulently under uh, September 8th, 2022 for Sonia Rosado when she submitted her petition on September 8th, uh, 2023. And her name is Luisa Oyarson, not Sonia Rosado. That's the problem, one of the problems. Okay, so I'm going to transfer you over to a civil clerk, but so when you say the clerk, but the clerk didn't do that. It's the attorney who did that. But when you look at the summons, the summons is under uh, Sonia Rosato. That's what it says. Yes. That's the attorney who filed that, not a clerk, okay? Yes. I'll transfer you over to a civil... Yes, I understand because I also yeah. reported reported the attorneys that are involved in this fraudulent eviction against this elderly disabled citizen uh, when they but, filed. So, 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 Miss, uh -huh. okay, I, I do apologize. So, you, we have the civil case, but there's also an eviction case? Exactly, because when uh, Richard... Okay, uh, let me take a look. Let me take a look at the eviction case so I can understand what's going on. Give me one second. So the eviction case is under what name? Uh, it should be under uh, Luisa Oyarsson, but they're using somebody else's eviction case to illegally evict her. They're using um, okay. uh, Angel Give Martinez. Me, Angel Martinez eviction case. Give me one second. I do apologize because there's a lot of... Uh, I, I need to find the cases so I can understand... Because uh, there seems to be different cases. What is the address for the eviction, please? It's 44 Center Street, Waterbury, Connecticut, all 6702, apartment 2, P as in Peter. I'm sorry, what was your name? <laughs> I forgot to ask you. <laughs> so, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You said it's 44 Center Street? Yes, Waterbury, Connecticut, all and 6702. What's the apartment number, please? Apartment 2P, as in Peter. Okay, because I'm not showing an eviction case under the address you're giving me. Yes. Uh, so uh, they were, the, the, tenants, the, tenants were, the tenants were served with a summons and a complaint? No, the tenants were not served with a summons or, or, or a complaint. The tenant was served with a 30 days notice, uh, eviction notice, a fake eviction notice by the attorneys. So you mean involved. a notice to quit? Exactly. So you mean a notice to quit? They were served with a notice to quit? Yes, okay. by, the, by the same so, um, U.S. Marshal that has been serving her fraudulent papers for the last five years or so to illegally evict her, Mr. Brian Hovard. I believe he's, I, not, he's not his, his name. Miss, yes. Miss, I, I'm I'm so sorry. So, if they were served with the notice to quit, the notice to quit it's not something that's entered in our system. The notice I understand. to quit is not a case; it's just between the landlord and the tenant. Yes, I understand. But the problem is that the the lawyers 
that are committing the court fraud uh, with Mr. Uh, the chief uh, uh, clerk, Richard, are uh, evicting her with no um, uh, valid but cause. But who is Richard? I don't know. I don't know Richard. Who is Richard? You, you say the chief clerk. Who is Richard? I don't know who it is. Richard is the chief court clerk of the Waterbury Housing Court in Waterbury, Connecticut. And, uh, we don't have a Richard. We, we don't have a Richard. I don't know who Richard is. Well, uh, I called last week and they told me that Richard w was the chief court clerk of your housing court here in, in Waterbury, Connecticut. How come you don't know of him? Uh, okay, I see what he's not the, uh, he's the chief clerk for the, for the whole judicial district, not housing only, the whole judicial district. Yes, uh, the problem is that I remember, I think I remember his name, and he was the one who forged, committed forgery to prevent the elderly disabled victim of this illegal eviction uh, with no good cause uh, by these fraudulent lawyers uh, from filing her petition. So he has been preventing her from filing her petition against his landlord's friends for the last five years, and that uh, made her loss, lose important deadlines uh, for her case to uh, be heard in court and to win uh, against the landlords who are committing this fraud to illegally evict her. So that's the problem. But what case, what case are you referring to? As, because the, I can't find any eviction case. What case are you referring to? Yes, the different cases that she filed in civil, civil court against the landlord for trying to illegally evict her for the last five years or so. Miss, Miss, I do apologize. So, I'm sorry, and you didn't give me your name. What, what was your name? name? What was your name again? Karina. Oh, Karina. Karina. Yes. It's K K A R I N A. So, so I, I'm sorry. Who, who's the, who's the landlord? Because you said the landlord filed some case with the court. Yes, the landlord is. Uh, okay. Yes. What is the name of the landlord? So, I, at least because I'm not finding any cases. So, well, what is the name of the landlord? Please? Well, he gave her a thirty days to quit notice uh, for no good cause, which is fraud, um, and he's trying to illegally evict her. So he's going to file. Uh, he's supposed to file the case after January fifteenth, which is the the uh, day that he gave her, gave her to. Uh, 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 leave okay. the premises. So there's no, yes, so there's no case yet. Yes, the problem is that uh, the elderly disabled tenant victim, uh, the Christian tenant victim, has tried to file a court case against these landlords, the clients of these lawyers, and she has prevented, uh, she has been prevented from, fi from filing her cases. And the statute. So why did she m m miss? Miss, I'm, I'm sorry. And the uh, Connecticut statute uh, states that specifically section 60-7 and 60-8 state that if a petition is filed, the court clerk must stamp and file the petition, organize and uh, prepare the papers, and leave it to the judge to say uh, whether he's dismissing the case or not not block the petitioners of the uh, petition, uh, in this case, the elderly disabled eviction victim, uh, for five months, uh, and, and, and uh, frankly, from for five years, and prevent them from filing a petition against the, fr the friends, the landlord friends of the court clerks. That's the problem. And I'm sorry, but uh, I, I I had to uh, tell you this because you are not letting me speak, so I had to speak my mind so you understand no, the but, case. No, but I'm still not understanding. That's what I'm trying to... Here, I'm trying to help you. So when you say a petition, are you trying to... to, to are you saying like a code enforcement case? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, what are you trying to say by your petition? Well, when when I mention a petition, I mean the petition that I gave to the news reporters, which is several pages long, which is notarized and signed by the uh, uh, tenant victim and that uh, was refused by your court uh, chief court clerk, Richard which is a violation of a section, uh, the Connecticut status, statutes 
section 60-7 and 60-8, which says that he must take the petition, stamp it and file it upon receiving the petition, give it a docket number, and if he has any problems with uh, the petition, he needs to inform the petitioner uh, of the lawsuit uh, and leave it up to the judge to decide whether or not it's a good petition or not. He cannot uh, violate this Connecticut statutes uh, to protect his landlord's friends. And he has done so for the last five years through forgery as well. So that's the problem. And now his friends are using their bogus uh, lawyers to use somebody else's court papers to illegally evict her because they know she's a, a, an excellent tenant and that has kept the place uh, neatly for five years uh, that uh, doesn't make any noise, doesn't have prostitution, doesn't do anything uh, yeah, illegal, no doesn't drink, smoke, or use any drugs. So they have no good cause to ev evict her and that's why they bought the cases, the papers from uh, another case, eviction case, which are uh, which belong to Angel Martinez, and are using so those fraudulent that. those papers to illegally evict this elderly disabled uh, Christian uh, tenant from uh, her apartment, her government subsidized Section Eight apartment, which is called court fraud. That's the problem. You under you're understanding what the problem is now. No, I'm not understanding what the problem is. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to give it to you in a nutshell. You cannot, as a court clerk, uh, you cannot uh, not stamp and file uh, a lawsuit filed by a constituent of the United States or uh, the District of Columbia. You cannot do that. You qualify for nine years in prison for doing that. You have to, upon receiving the petition, you have to stamp it and file it, give it a docket number, and then, and then if you have any problems with the petition, you, you have to leave it up to the judge to... Um, to decide whether the petition is good or not. You cannot decide uh, as a judge and be the gatekeeper of uh, the petitions filed in court because that's not the court clerk's job. The court clerk's job is to receive and file, stamp it and file the petitions and um, prepare the court uh, papers uh, accordingly and leave leave it up to the judge to say whether the petition is good or not yes. not to say uh your petition is not good and to block it from being filed that's a crime and that's why i want to speak to the supervisor of the chief court clerk here in the state of Connecticut because I already contacted the news reporters and they have the evidence that this chief court clerk by the name of Richard have been involved in this court fraud in the United States. And also the uh, court clerk's uh, jobs uh, are to make sure that the process of the court uh, in the United States are um, legitimate, not uh, involved in fraud, uh, in sham, which he, that's the legal term, a sham, uh, and he has been involved in that. So do you, do you understand now why I want to speak to his supervisors? Okay. I mean, what I can do, I can uh, give you his email address. The email address of the supervisor? Why don't you give me her phone number, Alexander, right? I, I, cannot, I cannot give you the phone number. I already have the phone number of Alexander, but if you don't want to give it, you're supposed to give it to me. But if you don't want to give it, I'll let the news reporters know that uh, I asked for it and it was denied to me. But I already have it. What else can you say about the the court fraud that has been going on in your court? I'm, you know, again, miss, I'm not sure what you're looking for. I'm, I'm, my name is Corina. I'm an office clerk. I'm a housing clerk. Um, okay, so give me the email uh, address of the court supervisor uh, for the chief court, court uh, clerk, uh, Mr. Richards, supervisor. I can give you the. I can give you Richards' email address. 
no, I already have his information and I gave it to the news reporters already. So they uh, are able to contact him. Uh, so you cannot assist us in any way, shape or form, even though I told you and I cited the laws that uh, Richard uh, and his court clerk are violating housing court here in Waterbury, Connecticut to illegally evict this tenant for no good cause. It seems that she's consulting. She put me on the speakerphone and is uh, consulting with uh, the other deep state mafia members within the co this court to tell me what she's going to tell me. So they always do that uh, with this deep state mafia, modus operandi. No, my question is, what can you help this elderly disabled uh, a Christian tenant petitions w petitioner with when she, her petition has been blocked for the last five months by Richard and for the last five years by Richard. And now she's yeah, being I, I'm sorry, and, I, I, and now she's being evicted uh, illegally because uh, she missed the uh, important deadlines that uh, she needed to meet because he blocked her petition from being filed for the last five months. And now his court friend, his uh, landlord friends are illegally evicting her for no good cause through court fraud. So you cannot help her in any way, shape or form, right? Again, I'm, I'm sorry, miss, but again, my name is Corina. I'm a housing office clerk. You know, uh, if you need legal advice, I can refer you to legal aid. No, I already saw, cited the law, so that's uh, done with. Uh, that's why I cited the law, because I already spoke to an attorney, and the attorney, I already consulted an attorney. The attorney said the court clerk's job uh, is, is not to be the, the gatekeeper for uh, the petitions. Their job is to receive, stamp, and file the petitions and leave it up to the judge to decide whether the petition is good or not, or something is missing or not. They're not the gatekeeper. Uh, their job is not that one. Uh, and if they, if Mr. Richard and his court clerk wanted to re refuse the uh, petition by the elderly disabled uh, addiction victim, for the last five years and lately for the last five months, they should have given her the form that is a refusal form, uh, is notice of refusal form saying, we the court clerk, uh, court clerks uh, are refusing to file your petition. But even if uh, they gave her the notice of refusal form to refuse to file the, her petition, they still have to file the petition uh, according to the law. Uh, but the judge would see the refusal, uh, uh, the notice of refusal form attached to her petition, and then the judge, not them, will decide whether the petition is good or not, not the court clerks. So knowing that, uh, and knowing that she was blocked from filing her petition for the last five months uh, by uh, Chief Court Clerk Richard and his, her court clerks, what can you help her with? Because now she's been ev evicted illegally for no good cause by these um, fraudulent lawyers who are using other other uh, people's uh, court um, e eviction records to illegally evict her because they know that she's an excellent tenant and they have no good cause to evict her. So that's why she's asking asking you for help. What can you help her with right now? And also, she's saying that she's a okay, woman. I'm... She's not uh, Angel Martinez. Yo tuve tres hijas, dile. Angel Martinez is a man. Exactly. Okay, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't help you. I'm going to try to transfer you over to my supervisor. I'm at the call center. I mean, I'm at 80 Washington Street. I'm going to try to transfer you to, that, to you know, the supervisor and see if the supervisor can help you. One moment, please. Ella me va a transferir a otro supervisor porque nadie quiere meter la mano en esa candela. Él es el supervisor del distrito. Uh -huh. 
supervisor. I'm going to transfer you over to the supervisor. Thank you. Hello, are you there? Apparently, hello. Good afternoon, Superior Court. Your call's been transferred to Karina's supervisor. My name's Shauna O'Donnell. Um, she gave me a docket number, but I'm not really sure this is the right case you're calling about. Um, it's for Sonia Rosado versus Exchange Place Preservation Partners, LLC. Is that the case? Uh, yes, that's the case. But what happened is that this case was um, um, changed. Uh, the, it was supposed to be filed under uh, Luisa Oyarsun's name, which is the uh, one that filed the petition on or around the beginning of September of 2023. And instead, they filed it under Sonia Rosado and uh, changed the 23. You might be thinking of a different changed the 23 for the 22. So they filed it under uh, September 8th, 2022 for Sonia Rosado when it was supposed to be filed on September 8th, 2023 for uh, Luisa Oyarsson, the petitioner. So we don't go back retroactively and make a case a year earlier. There, there's no way to do that in our system. Maybe it's a different case you're thinking of, because this one, the paperwork all says 2022, and it was started by a law firm, not an individual. Do you think there's a different case out there? Well, uh, that's really strange because uh, your name is Chana O'Donnell, right? All D O N A L D, yes. right? O apostrophe D O N N E L L. N N E L L. Okay. Oh, okay. I I misspelled it. I'm sorry. O O D O N O. Okay. okay. So um, are you yes, the petitioner I am, in this other case that you're yes, talking about? I am the authorized representative. Okay, what's your name? Uh, I am the authorized representative for the petition and whose petition and whose petitions have been blocked by the chief court clerk Richard for the last five months to give time to his so uh, landlord court landlord friends to uh, file uh, fraudulent papers uh, at your court and illegally evict this elderly disabled Christian tenant from her government subsidized section eight apartment. Um, with no good cause. And so that's why they're using somebody else's court papers, Angel Martinez court papers, uh, and replacing uh, his name with her name to be able to illegally evict her uh, through court fraud because they know, these lawyers know, that she's an excellent tenant and they have no good cause to uh, evict her. That's the problem. Where you can't hear me, I'm gonna just, oh, there you are. Hi ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, I'm, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? What are the names of the parties that, that actually filed the case? And I can look and see if there's a different case. It's not this one. Well, uh, the case, the, the uh, doctors, I mean, the uh, lawyers that I reported that have been reported already to the disciplinary committee. No, ma'am, I want the names of the parties for the case. So your name and the name of the person you say you represent. Okay, then my name is Solange Martinez. I am the, the authorized representative for the elderly disabled victim, Luisa Oyarsson, the tenant victim. When and you say the, authorized representative, are you their legal conservator, their power of attorney, or some other legal relationship? No, I'm a, I am her authorized representative, just like the denotation of the word uh, authorized representative says. Okay, so you wouldn't be somebody that would be involved in a lawsuit on their behalf. Can you spell the person that you're calling on behalf of? Well, uh, I, I am sorry to say I have been involved in a lawsuit uh, on her behalf and she won the court case that I represented her uh, in against the DSS commissioner in 2019. So, Do you have a docket number for a different case if that's the one you're calling about? Uh, no, because the docket number was supposed to be hers, but somebody changed the information. And coincidentally, 
the so if you have any court documents the case the case the petition that she filed in september uh was uh blocked by uh chief court clerk richard which is a violation of the connecticut statutes a crime for five months and now his court fr his landlord friends are illegally evicting her with no good cause patient that actually shows this you can bring it in person to the court we'll take a look and we'll see if there's anything we can sort out but it doesn't sound like what you're describing matches up with the case i'm seeing yes the problem right. is uh miss so, uh so o'donnell bring your documentation the problem is miss o'donnell uh that we took the the uh, lawsuits the petition uh of this elderly disabled christian uh tenant uh victim to uh, your court about five times uh, and each time Mr. Richard blocked uh, the uh, peti her petition, refused to give it a docket number and stalled the case. So his uh, landlord friends can uh, illegally evict her with no good cause, which is a crime. About what we can and can't accept so unfortunately, it sounds like you're trying to speak on behalf of somebody when only a lawyer can represent someone else. Uh, you're wrong. Uh, your uh, authorized representative can't represent you in court because I have done that and represented her in the court uh, case against the Department of Social Services Commissioner. And she won the court case and she got a uh, disposition ordering this uh, DSS commissioner to give her back her food stamps and other government benefits that he stole from her. And that after that, the problems with the landlords starts because they receive uh, monies from the DSS commissioners. Isn't that a coincidence? As you can see, uh, this is what they do. They hang up first. They don't let you speak. Uh, because they don't want the truth to come out and when they uh, know that uh, you are not allowing them to not let you speak they fabricate uh, laws saying that you cannot represent somebody else if you're not an attorney when you can represent yourself is called pro se and if you represent yourself you can uh, have a, a somebody to represent you because I have done this many times in court. And as I explained, uh, a, I got a disposition, she got a disposition when I represented her from uh, a court case. And uh, that means that uh, what she's saying is a fabrication uh, that somebody cannot be represented by somebody unless the person is an attorney. Uh, that's a fabrication. So in, if she's a court clerk, she knows very well that uh, she's lying. So this is why she hung up. Uh, and this is why the um, sham, uh, the court fraud continues. Eso enseña que ellos tienen parcialidad con uh, Pero, el landlord y no es gratis porque ellos no van a, a, a violar la ley gratis. No, gratis. Algo tienen que estar ellos, ellos, que ingresan, estar ellos, ellos sí, recibiendo para violar la ley y por eso es que ellos trancan los teléfonos porque ellos eh, eh, no pueden argumentar lo que no oficina, es argumentable toda oficina no está en, en el mundo entero cuando usted lleva una demanda el, el de la farmacia está supuesto a, a ponerle el número de, de folio a sellarlo ponerle el sello no es de la sellarlo. farmacia es de la corte el de la corte está supuesto a a, a, a estamparlo, a estamparlo a archivarlo, el, a archivarlo y todo y, se, y, y sellarlo y darle el número de hacer. folio él no está supuesto a hacer otro trabajo no él no puede bloquear él no puede exactamente no eh, puede. ninguna demanda porque es una violación de la y sesión de la representación cualquier persona se puede sentar representar esa persona misma o usted busca cualquier persona que, que le que, que le pueda traducir esa es su representante que la repre, que la represente. cualquier persona puede ser cualquier persona de la calle el, el, el panadero el, el friero cualquier persona puede representarla a usted en cualquier corte en el país en el mundo entero Imagínate, y eso es una corte eh, baja. baja. En la imagínate. corte alta, en la corte federal. Si en la corte federal yo me representé yo representa. misma, ah. entonces yo, y, y tú me, tradu me, me estaba traduciendo, 
Entonces, eso quiere decir que, que tú me representaste a mí en una corte federal. Entonces, no solamente traduciendo, porque baja, ellos no pueden buscar ser. un traductor que te traduzca. Y el traductor no los representa a nadie. No. La que los representa es la persona que dice, ella, yo estoy representando es a esa persona. persona. Yo soy la representante de esa persona. Sí. Y litiga el caso, como yo hice con el caso de Verónica no. King. Y Verónica King te dio una orden de corte, es que ordenándole al, al comisionado de, de DSS que, que te pagara todo, exactamente. Todo y, que me, me, y me subió la estampilla y ellos se quedaron con todo y no me, no me, no me devolvieron. El próximo mes no me, no me mandaron las estampillas y se quedaron con todo. Después que ella ordenó en, la, en esa corte que tenían que, que devolverte que todo 20 tu dólares dólares mensual para la ayuda mía. 20 dólares y me subió las estampillas y ellos se quedaron con los 20 dólares y con, y, la y con las estampillas también por cuatro años en de eso y ahora yo hace cinco meses en septiembre que yo mandé eh, una demanda a la corte le he mandado eh, cinco veces en, en entrega especial y ellos siempre dicen que, que hay una cosa sacan los papeles entran otro que falta una firma que falta una firma por qué porque ellos él no la quiere hacer, él no lo quiere hacer porque no le conviene porque él él claro, está, si, exactamente. si los amigos de él son el landlord, los landlords, él no va a dejar que tú no. hagas tu, tu petición no. y cuando él no deja que Legalmente, tú hagas tu petición, que tú no. pongas tu demanda Porque en contra del gente, landlord, eso es un crimen. Eso es un crimen. Y, ellos están y él califica para nueve años de cárcel por ese crimen. Y ellos están, están, están haciendo las cosas ilegalmente y poniéndome a mí que yo me llamo Ángel Martínez y que vivo aquí. ¿Cuántas personas que viven en este apartamento? Yo conté como yo cinco. Soy una dama porque yo tuve tres hijas y un varón no puede tener hijo aunque tenga la barriga hasta el cielo. No la puede tener porque es varón. Son las mujeres. Lo que, que pasa es que ellos se roban el, lo, 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 sí. los papeles de corte de la edición de, de otra gente, persona. Y le ponen el nombre, le quitan el Ajá, nombre. Y le sacan ponen el nombre. fotocopia y le ponen el nombre de la víctima para y se lo entonces ponen en la puerta, sacar la a la víctima del apartamento, uh -huh. hacer una, un depósito a la víctima, sí, una falso. edición falsa. Porque ellos saben que la víctima es una, una tena, una inquilina excelente y ellos no sí. tienen causa buena para sacarlo. Lo que dice la ley, sí. causa buena, a good cause para ¿Por qué tú crees que sacarlo? el Lando mandó, a, mandó a, a, hacerle, a romper esa puerta? Fue el Lando que lo permitió y ellos estaban toditos riéndose en la oficina, riéndose. Eso es ganguerío. Exactamente. Y ellos, eso no es ley, eso es ganguerío. Ellos, exactamente. Ellos se estaban riendo toditos en la oficina y ellos, uno de ellos habla. Entonces, ¿cómo, ¿cómo yo lo sé? Porque ellos hablan. Ellos hablan. Y ella dice que no se puede eh, poner en la computadora casos fraudulentos. Y esa, esa corte... Ahí lo que y no toda se la ponen corte, es que casos reales. Sí, pero casos fraudulentos sí, falsos. Porque dice que no se puede, que después que se pone el caso no se puede eh, cambiar en la computadora. Yo estoy, yo documenté con grabaciones que ellos ponen la cosa en la computadora y después se entran en la computadora y cambian lo que ellos quieren de la computadora. Ellos lo, ellos lo cambian, lo, lo, lo borran y lo ponen otra track. cosa. Exactamente. Exactamente. Lo, lo borran y ponen otra cosa en la computadora. Y yo no, ¿cómo yo me voy a poner a mí otro nombre si yo no me llamo así? Es imposible que ellos me pongan a mí, que yo me llamo Ángel Martínez o Sonia Rosario. No, ellos no te ponen que tú te, llama, que tú te llamas Ángel Martínez. O sea, Martínez. ellos... La, lo que ellos la... te pusieron que tú te llamas Sonia Rosado para que cuando eh, tú digas, no, pero yo puse una demanda, ellos digan, no, aquí nada más aparece no. Sonia Rosado. Y no hay ninguna demanda. Y no fue del 2023, sí. fue en el 2022, porque sí. ellos le cambiaron el, el, do, el 3 por el 2. Y fue en el 2023. El, y fue en el do, septiembre de 2023. En septiembre de 2023. Septiembre 8. Sí, no fue en... Y en, eso se llama falsificación de documentos, porque tú no puedes cambiar ni un número, ni una letra, entonces, ni nada. Cuando a esa gente se le dice la cosa así, ellos, ellos no te saben tranca. qué hacer y trancan Exacto. el teléfono y no saben qué hacer. Claro. Y ellos hacen esas cosas. Porque esa gente no son cristianos, esa gente no creen en nada, en nada absolutamente. Solamente creen en el dinero que ellos se, se roban, que estafan a, a la gente pobre, porque a los ricos no se lo cogen. No, a los ricos no se atreven. Para acabar con ellos, tú sabes, para que uh -huh. haya más pobre y entonces haya más rico. Uh -huh. A los pobres que le, ellos eh, les cogen, les roban. Lo que pasa es que ella no va a poner, eh, a, no, no va a a decir que el, el, el supervisor de ella, el está jefe el eso. jefe de ella está cometiendo fraude de corte, porque no. entonces el jefe de ella la puede votar, y por eso ella ella eh, desconectó la llamada. Es que se supone que en una corte nadie puede eh, cometer el fraude, nadie, aunque sea el supervisor, el corte, nadie puede hacerlo, y, y eso lo sabe, eh, 
si él, él está haciendo todo eso, es porque tiene el permiso de, del supervisor, de, del, super, del Richard. Porque tiene el permiso de él, por eso es que él no ha firmado los papeles que yo le mando y me lo está devolviendo como, como tirándome la pelota. Para, tú me la mandas, yo te la tiro. Y, y paga y paga y cosa hasta que la gente se, se destruya totalmente porque eso es el plan de ellos. Destruir a la gente que, que es inocente y que está haciendo, diciendo la verdad y está haciendo lo correcto. Es el plan de ellos, destruirlo. ¿Cómo uno llama a una oficina aquí en los Estados Unidos y ella cierra, eh, eh, no le contestan lo que uno le pregunta? Se ponen a hablar, no dejan que uno hable y, y entonces cierran el teléfono cuando no saben nada que decir. O se, se lo, no, es que otra, es otro departamento que no soy yo. Y así se lo pasan de departamento a departamento hasta que acaban con la persona. Tú sabes, por eso aquí han pasado muchas cosas también. Tú no ves que la gente aquí se muere así, súbitamente así, ¡pum! ¡pum! Uh -huh. Se murió. Se murió, ¿y cómo se murió? Pero si esa persona del corazón, bien. pero ella no se sufría del corazón. Se murió del corazón, pero no sufría del corazón. ¿Y de por qué se murió? Entonces, es por eso que, que... Porque la gente está haciendo todas las cosas incorrectas y, y haciendo negocios falsos. Todo falso. Y esa gente lo... Le, le, lo engrasan y, y hacen cualquier mentira, la ponen verdad. Ellos viran la cosa. Y, y la demanda, se le pone una demanda a una persona y ellos quitan... Y ponen el nombre de otra persona. Es exactamente, decir, para que, exactamente. Para que no sea válido que esa persona demandó a, a ese lado, que no sea válido. Y sacan la demanda de la persona que la puso, escriben una demanda que, que, que tiene disparate, que no tiene sentido. No la tiene ponen sentido. ahí, le ponen el nombre de la persona sí. y firman como y si fuera la, la, la persona, persona. Que la persona no. Que es, la demanda no es válida porque sí. es disparatosa. Es disparatosa, que no tiene, que no tiene, que no es, que no uh -huh. es aceptable. Sí. Se dice, se, dice, se dice que es eh, una demanda eh, fraudulenta, fraudulenta o un sham o un, un acoso. Sí. Eh, eh, y entonces eh, ellos eh, documentan falsamente que la persona que se está defendiendo pero lo que está dijo, acosando el de ella, ella dijo, el nombre de ella no está aquí. Aquí está Sonia, pero entonces es que aquí no vive ninguna Sonia Rosado ni ningún Ángel Martínez. Aquí vivo yo. Y si ellos pusieron... Eh, eh, el, 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 el número de ellos con el nombre mío, eso está demasiado falso. Dem demasiado no, ellos falso. cogen los papeles de, de, que le, de que le están dando de pose porque no paga, sí, la, renta. Porque no paga la renta. Y eh, le sacan una copia y a ese papel, ellos en esa copia borran con white out a el nombre de Miguel Martínez, escriben Luisa o Yarson, le sacan otra copia y entonces esa... Esos papeles fraudulentos te lo mandan a ti diciendo que tú eres la Atena que estás rehusando pagar la renta, que le sí. están, la, la están sacando porque no paga la renta. Y, Cuando y los abogados puede... y los LAN lo saben muy bien sí. que tú tienes sesión 8 y que, que tú no tienes que pagar 8. renta. Y si yo tengo que pagar algo, es una mínima cosa. Tú es no tienes mínimo. que pagar no renta porque pagar tú, nada, tú tienes sesión 8. De que tengan que pagar 5 pesos, 6 pesos, son 6 dólares. O 10 dólares, son 10 dólares. ¿Tú, no te, ¿tú recuerdas nada? cuando ella te Lo dijo, es que mándame no. los, pa, la, la, los gastos médicos tuyos para sí. rebajarte la renta? Sí, ¿cómo no ¿Tú te acordar? acuerdas que tú se lo mandaste? 450. ¿Tú te acuerdas que tú se lo mandaste dos veces y nunca te rebajó nada? Nunca rebajó nada. ¿Te digo por qué ella no te rebajó nada? Porque yo tengo Porque tú no pagas renta. Yo no pago renta. Porque, eso Ellos es, se a, a porque tú a tienes sesión 8, por eso ella no te rebajó nada, porque qué te va a rebajar si tú no pagas renta y el dinero que tú le estabas dando, que ella, ella le llama renta, sí. es una extorsión sí. diciéndote, si tú no me das este dinero, aunque tú tengas sesión 8, yo voy a usar mis influencias en la sí. corte para dejarte homeless y sacarte de tu apartamento. Y el año, es el pas problema. El año pasado, según ella, me subió la renta en enero, febrero y marzo, 20 dólares. Eso también se lo embolsilló ella. La renta, si, si se paga sí. renta, no se no, sube, no, no, no se sube, se no se sube tres veces en, en, en un año. La pero, renta, si se paga renta, se sube cada año, no tres veces en un año. Pero sí, pero si sí, yo lo sé, todo el mundo lo sabe eso. Entonces ella está robando, no está estafando, la, la está enseñé, extorsionando. Dije, sí, ella me cobró eh, 60 dólares, me dice, ¿cómo es posible? Cuando yo le enseñé el banco, le digo yo, mire, mire, usted ve eso, y usted ve la cuenta. Mire, me dijo, oh my God, pero es una estafa. Yo le, eso, Ella es una estafadora. Es, es una estafadora. Por eso ellos te quieren sacar rápido el apartamento para que no se descubra la estafa. Exactamente. 
con, con cosas de otra persona sin uno hacer nada. Y, y, con los documentos de, de otra, otra persona, persona que sí paga renta sí. Y, y, y no la, tapa, no la pagó. Y no la, porque ellos tienen mucha gente que aunque este país sea de, de, de sesión 8, ellos tienen mucha gente que, que ellos les rentan el apartamento. Que no califica que para no califica vivir para aquí, para pero se los rentan. Y ellos se los rentan. Entonces con ellos, ellos... Con el dinero de los pagadores de tasas. Exactamente. Entonces, ese es el problema. Y además, ella, claro que ella no va a hacer nada acerca de, de, lo, de los crímenes y el, la, el fraude de corte que el, que el supervisor de ella no. uh, está cometiendo, porque entonces el, 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 el trabajo de ella está en peligro porque él la puede votar. Pero entonces, claro que eh, la puede eh, votar. Eh, ese es claro un problema. Que la puede votar. Si Por eso trabajé, ella trancó. Yo trabajé casi 11 años en el Sijón y cuando a mí me decían, ¿usted hizo esto? No, usted no hizo eso. Y yo dije, sí, yo lo hice eso. No, porque usted no fue que lo hizo. Yo lo hice y yo no voy a decir que no, porque yo hice ese trabajo. Porque el trabajo cuando estaba mal, me querían poner a mí. Cuando estaba bien, se lo querían poner a otra gente. Yo le dije, no, yo hice esto. Yo hice ese trabajo. Por eso yo duré todos esos años en ese sitio. Y te dieron certificado de excelencia. De excelencia, excelencia claro. Excelencia trabajadora. Tú trabajar en un sitio y trabajar muchas horas. Doblaba el turno muchas veces. Llegaba a mi casa con 50 años a las 12 de la noche. Llegaba a mi casa. Por suerte que tenía mi parqueo, me, me parqueaba y, y entraba a mi casa de una vez. No, eso es una cosa, es una cosa así. El hecho de que una gente esté enferma no quiere decir que la gente tenga problemas mentales, ni sea loco, ni nada de eso. Que no, ellos le ponen con... problemas mentales. Te digo por qué. Porque la industria de los problemas mentales es mucho dinero, está involucrada en mucho dinero. Entonces ellos te ponen problemas mentales a ti, problemas mentales a mí, problemas mentales a todo el que ellos puedan. Y yo en pueda. papel, entonces van y buscan medicinas que, que son para problemas mentales supuestamente recetada a ti, a mí y a todo el que yo pueda y venden esa medicina en la Cada calle vez que yo voy dando por médico, muchos millones de dólares. Yo le digo al doctor, yo tengo esos problemas de salud de muchos años y yo lo que hago es, es un seguimiento porque esa medicina yo la tomo por muchos años. Y la yo epilepsia no, no califica para problemas mentales. Exactamente, ni el cáncer califica tampoco para, para califica. problemas mentales, ni tampoco la epilepsia tampoco. Y si yo tengo mi tratamiento, yo me mantengo bien y serena totalmente. Y eso es lo único, es un seguimiento. Cuando a mí me da cualquier infección, sí necesito una medicina nueva, pero es lo único. Después es la misma medicina. El que esté haciendo otras medicinas extra, eso es, eso es estafa, porque yo no estoy usando ninguna Y no con tu extra. consentimiento. Ni yo voy a aceptar una cosa así, no. Porque a ti la policía te quería arrestar allá en Upstate diciendo que tú eras una, una jefa de la mafia. Que yo dije porque que estaba que cogiendo la, la, la ayuda en todas las partes. En más de cuatro la... mil condados, dijo la, la policía. Pero señora, si yo ni siquiera... Ni siquiera hablo Sesión inglés. 8, full cover, sí. todo full cover. ¿Cómo yo voy a tener? Sí, usted tiene sesión 8 en todas las partes, mire, mírelo ahí, mire. Más de 4 mil eh, condados. Pero es que ustedes no están supuestos a darle sesión 8 a, toda la, a una gente. Lo que en pasa es que partes. en diferentes condados, si la gente se muda y califica, ellos se lo dan. Entonces, eso es lo que ellos hacen. Pero tú no estás involucrada en eso. Que vaya, sí. yo se lo dije a ella, vaya a coger preso a la gente que está haciendo eso. Mi mamá no está haciendo eso. Yo se lo dije, por eso ella dijo, mejor no, porque yo le dije, yo tengo la prueba, yo le busco la prueba, y si vamos sí. a corte, vamos a litigar el caso, sí. usted va a tener que buscar la prueba que, que indica que ella fue que cogió toda esa no, sesión. Ella 8. me dijo, mire, excúseme, que fue una, una confusión, ah, excúseme. Que, porque se dio que cuenta no que la jefa sí. de ella, que el, la comisionada de, del departamento de, de, la que estaba haciendo la, la, de servicio la, social, los transfer, los transfer de una sí, la comisionada de del departamento de servicio social era que estaba robando con tu con tu nombre y tu número de seguro social. Entonces ella te pidió excusa. Pero tú le dijiste que yo, que yo soy una mujer, que yo no soy un hombre, porque yo... Sí. Exactamente. Yo se lo dije, ella se llama sí. Luisa Yasun, no Ángel Martínez. Si yo tuve tres hijas es porque yo soy una mujer, porque Exacto. un hombre no pare. Claro. Un hombre no que, puede que, yo, que se sepa, ¿no? Ahora sí, si ellos bueno, están se sepa, yo no en, en otras cosas y esto claro, otras cosas. Porque si, si ella no tiene nada 